Hi, I'm Zameless, and today I want to show you some things that are brought to you by ToonTrack. Uh, they gave me easy base to play with, and also this library, Electronic Edge, uh, which is an easy drummer library, but I'm using it in Superior Drummer, because I like Superior Drummer. Um, this video is to show you a little snippet of a thing I did, and to explain the workflow, and how it all works, and what the layering is about, and why it's super cool. Um, but I'm going to play the thing to show you what it's like. It's kind of loud, and here it comes in three, two, one. Yeah. So, many fun and interesting things about this track, but the kind of main one, uh, uh, in my opinion, is a bit how like this easy bass patch worked out, but let's talk about the drums to get there. Uh, let's break down the mix a bit. Uh, so the way that this works is this is the this is what the uh, Easy X looks like inside Superior Drummer. These are all like little bits of UI that are from like the normal Superior Drummer kit, and the actual Easy X, the Easy Drummer patch for Easy Drummer for Electronic Edge, looks way different. Um, but all the sounds are the same, and on top of that, you get to edit them and mess with them the way that you would inside Superior Drummer, which is amazing, because the thing that's excellent about just a bunch of random kind of targeted focused sorts of electronic samples, random targeted focused, all totally opposite terms. Now, what, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I mean by that is that they're not really <laughs> drummy drums. There, it's a lot, a lot more like a Foley kit. That's kind of what this feels like. And that's honestly what you need when you're doing electronic stuff, because now, now that you're driving this much power, everything you're doing is a layer consideration. It was already a layer consideration when you were doing metal and you're mixing like a bass guitar and a drummer and a drum and like a, a guitar player and a vocalist all layered in their real specific zones that they live in. Like that's still layering, that's true. But like now we're going so much harder with so much more like actual literal amplitude that we have to take that to like the next level, which is now those individual things are all, all their own layers. They have all made up of the little tinier bits. Like this kick, for example. It's made up of that tiny bit. And that and then this. And then this guy is like five different things. This is an easy uh an easy X called Kicks and Snares, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a kit of uh, for easy drummer that is entirely focused on kicks and snares. It has other kit stuff too, but really kind of its purpose is that you just slot it into other kits so that you have like the best kick and snare control. Um, and the way that it does that is that on top of having the in out and the sub mics for whatever kick that is, they have three whole other subs, or uh, just two subs, I guess, and that thing. And then also like a top click heat kind of deal. The snare has that kind of stuff too, but we're not doing that with the snare. The snare, on top of just being the snare, I have this just regular old Superior Drummer 3 snare with its stuff routed the way it is uh, in here, which is the snare top and bottom, and then also some of their ambient mics just kind of together in one channel. Um, this, these guys in their in their little like super layers along with the sources inside just this kit are all being pushed out to their, like kind of ex their specific buses. So we got our kick guy, <laughs> which is side chaining stuff, which is why the other guy is still active. Snare guy, hats, toms and junk that I'm not using. It's sort of other effects. There's that crash with the ride that changes tune. Uh, based on velocity, kind of fun. Uh, and then I put them all into a reverb send that gets high passed and then side chained it into the kick and snare. The kick and snare side chaining everything and then. It's also being like heavily squished together as a bus, which everything is being heavily squished together in the master. Now the heavy squishing, this is stuff that if you're, if you're like a metal producer or a band producer that's working, used to working with kind of live stuff and you're coming onto electronic, the thing that, that's different is that electronic stuff is rigid. It is all, it doesn't, it's not necessarily all perfect because it gets, you know, sometimes deliberately changed to not be perfect, but that's sort of the point is that those changes are deliberate. They have to be. The sources for like a digitally, like, you know, or even like analog electronic synthesis, sound waves and square waves and stuff, have a rigid like phase reality that is nothing like what a string is like. A string is just a, a chaos in comparison. And that um, makes it real hard to 
have that much power that because what ends up happening is that all the really minor differences in a thing like if you layer two things together that are not phase perfect it doesn't totally matter if it's not very loud but if it is extremely loud all of a sudden the differences is like all, all that you hear and that ends up being the case when you try to process uh super analog live stuff the same kind of power that you would electronic junk but when you are doing electronic junk you can't really do all the things the same way you would do with the live stuff like you can't actually be as careful you actually have to be the opposite you have to drive it as hard as you can and then care about like the foundational aspects and adding up the fact that like the low end of this guy is this heavy and the top end of this guy is this heavy and that their addition together with the validate that their level pushed that hard does what it does and it's being compressed a number of times it's being compressed through its individual bus and the bus for the drums and then in, in the bus in the master and those are multi-band so that means that they're going through the multi-band well actually this is the single band in the bus but in here is the multi-band in here so that's like five total stages of compression that's going through and the reason why that's possible is because the source does not ever change and the parts of it that do are exclusively high frequency the high, the most damaging most powerful lowest frequency stuff is pretty well kept together the deep kick part and that's the advantage that electronic stuff has it, it, it's a bit like playing a video game and knowing exactly what's going to happen every time versus playing a game that at least tries to be different has a kind of randomization element to it that you have to actually try to kind of care about but then a game that is actually the same every time you can start to do some stuff you can start to plan ahead and do some incredibly high energy high wackiness things because you actually know where all the stuff is and are prepared to handle it that way you are and that's a bit why the fully kit nature of this electronic edge stuff is the best because that's when you have a thing that is is perfect you can start to make those calls and think when you think of it in that way you can do things like have a hi-hat turn it way up shorten it a lot which i did in uh this uh stage up here kind of like i like this is one big reason i like superior drummers that they let you uh change the envelope on a per mix basis not just on a total instrument basis i'm not even really sure you can do that easy drummer but um yeah and then this whole other hi-hat that is the open hi-hat that does get closed by the closed but the, it's so not the same sound but it fits the void that needed to be filled by the sound and a lot of mixing and dealing with live instruments is mostly about carving a thing that already exists into the position you need it to be in but in the electronic world what it is is find a whole new thing that actually just fits the job you're looking for it's like this thing for example this is another layer this is this sound and a real crash this was me being like that's a kind of neat sound but it's too jarringly that doesn't fit it doesn't fill the space and then with this now all of a sudden it does now it has the literal electronic edge that i was looking for but it still does the traditional job of our traditional symbol and it's accomplished by the most basic methods of doing so by having both of these things and this is why electronic edge like it really really shines it's like these samples were made for this. They were made at, to be the top hat of a modern drum kit that like you, you really want to have normal, regular kind of meaty core things. But then you just kind of you high pass these things on top of that and you get a really solid kit experience. <laughs> Now, you could totally work these samples into a perfectly serviceable version of that, like with just because again, they're static, you can work pretty much any part of this into anything you want to do if you had enough time. But um, the quickness of this is mostly that it's the last 10%. It's that last little bit of stuff you usually are trying to get out of the sources that j just don't have it. They, there's ways to coax that out of stuff, like distortion can do pretty much whatever you want, but that's not as easy as just getting out of the sound. The layering, yeah, uh, that's a good time. Um, so that's like Electronic Edge's balance and value for me is I will use a kind of main regular deal that I'm, I'm used to working with, but I want to jazz it. Jazz it with junk that I didn't spend 30 hours making. Yes. Okay. Now, the other cool part of this track is Easy Bass. Easy Bass. Hey, yeah, yeah, let's do that again, huh? So what we're hearing there is basically the entire contribution of this sound towards the sound that we heard as the main bass in this track without the reinforcement that it has. Here's what it sounds like with the reinforcement.
and that was a pattern that I had not changed the tune of. This was originally a higher tune song. <laughs> So easy bass as a thing has a number of different kinds of like bass guitars to start. This is actually an expansion pack to get this metal guy. Um, I brought up this dude. This is just this is actually what this preset sounds like without anything. Um, and this is something I like. I, I actually am very impressed with when it comes to this whole this easy bass experience. Hit the spacebar. Um, this is just the so. Like other kinds of things like this, the whole point of this is that this is a clean bass guitar that's just unmessed with. Because by this point, there are, even if you do have an actual guitar, you probably also do the next part of it digitally. You probably have samples or, or rather chains that you're used to using that you just plug this into as though it were a player playing a guitar and you can treat it like a guitar recording. It's a bit like tune bag, tune bag's trick. Yes, it's tune tracks bag, isn't it? To have that this sort of like you can treat it like a player experience. And um, like that, like on top of this, like on top of being able to be this, you also have built in um, presets of things that are typically things you want to do with the bass. There's presets made by whoever, Forrestal, Forrester Seville, Seville, Forrester Seville is. Um, then there's also two tracks, sort of basic ones, but this chug pick setting. <laughs> It's exactly what I want. It's the sound that I try to make when I just would use my normal bass guitar. And it usually involves some splitting of stuff and different chains and merging and work. And then here it is, just in here. <laughs> I love it. Um, and that was the basis of the sound for this whole experience. And everything about what's happening here is mostly about um, now that I have the advantage of being able to use this sound in a note tracked triggered ex experience. Anybody who is an instrumentalist knows what I'm talking about, but let's, let, me, let me unpack this for a second. Now, I am a bass player. I was in a metal band, and I played bass in a metal band. One of the things about playing bass in a metal band is that you find out real quick why bass guitars typically aren't distorted, and that if they are, it's because there's actually a lot going on in whatever's distorting it to make it to account for the fact that it's distorting a bass guitar, mostly uh, focusing the distortion on the high end, where all the jangly jangles happen and just making that brighter. Because, as it turns out, making an actual bassy low power, low good powered clean end has to, wow, clean low end has to do with not messing with phase and having like a pretty like repeatable experience down there. And it's not to say that the guitar can't do it. You actually totally can. You just have to pick dead center in the string. If you do that, you'll actually get a pretty good, almost entirely perfect square wave out of it. But if because you're picking closer to the edges of the thing, you're basically pulse with modifying your, your jazz there. And the results are similar harmonically. Um, as a result, the sub isn't real present. And in an electronic track, that's just that's a deal breaker. That's you can't live life like that. But if you so the questions and the answers all start being about reinforcement. It starts being like, all right, well, this sound is not really as powerful as it needs to be in the low end. So I'm going to high pass and replace it. On top of that, this genre for this sound tends to have more of a high-end thing, too, doesn't it? So let's talk about the reinforcement. So without this guy, this is what it sounds like. guy is kind of not making a whole lot of sense but that's actually because these two dudes together are going into a distortion channel being high pass against also then this going into some other distortion so it's its point isn't actually being illustrated unless we listen to it like this so this is a key tracked high pass that is only opening up like that when it plays high notes because low notes it's too gross and too disgusting this is one of these things that is, again, the advantage of the fact that this is a MIDI track experience is that you can note track a filter. In real life, you just have a wah pedal. And if we, you just are tracking it with your foot, then you're great. But unless you're a maestro theremin foot player, that's not going to work out too well. And it's definitely not going to snap around like the string just sounds like that, which is kind of what you want. Um, yeah, so the, the whole of it, much like we're talking about drum mixing and like it's, it's about power and caring about how much is being smooshed into stuff. 
This is about smooshing it into distortion and having the smooshing equal out into hearing the bass texture, but having the the, the drum and bass power. And, and that's not just a sub thing, but also a high frequency thing too. Did I break something? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is all on where it needs to be. Yeah. Nope, I totally messed with something. What happened? Uh, I must have changed a level somewhere. Or I unlinked something. Oh, there it is. The core tone of the sound. Than that that phasing thing happening there that's that's traditionally an effect that happens in post by recording it in audio and then cloning it against itself and detuning one of the clones where we're doing it now is in gross beat um you can either wow way to be giant uh you can either uh use the line real lightly and make it real incredibly thin and slow because what's what this does is it slows down the audio and what I have done here is I've made it so that it's fading. You can hear it, the source. So you hear the source and you hear the slowed down version that's detuning it. So it'll do the thing. Uh, but the thing is, though, is that this is such a slight thing. And this is also like a repeated, like this happens on the beat, every beat. That's the only time it happens. But this dude can be animated. It can be automated. And I automated it out here. Now, though, this would be equivalent to as if I had done like that, if I had not done what I did. And this would be way too far. Like this is way too far. This is way too far. That, that that you gotta really get up in there to get the effect to go like at the range that the effect is usually expressed. And uh, so to make that happen in my XYZ controller, I have changed the input and the output multiplication so that the whole range in the output is expressed here, and then the whole range of the output of that output is expressed here, and then now this range of that output expressing through that. <laughs> And even now, even through this, I'm only animating this far down. That's how close to nothing that effect is, which is true when you're doing it the audio way. Like you're only detuning it by, you know, sense. Sense on the semitone. Anyway, um, so the combination here of the kind of sub and high frequency uh, boxing on top of like just strange, so like strange processing. And like what, what I've done here this distortion is going into a delay that is short but moving and then up here there's a delay it's also short but not moving as much and that's also not as loud uh this whole channel though is that all, all the way and it's mostly just to try and like synthesize up the process of the bass guitar in a way that you probably couldn't pull off live it's true that i could just put these channels on some things but this has to do with that repeated kind of regular nature of the synthesis stuff which is why this reinforcement had to happen which would mean that if you were to do this live, you would have to also have the reinforcement happen live, which is possible on some platforms, but not all, isn't it? Um, so that uh, that's why this sort of midi experience is pretty excellent in terms of this specific kind of sound design. You know, if you're trying to be realistic, this obviously isn't, isn't the best, but that's not really the point. <laughs> Uh, it's it's metal and smooth at the same time. Uh, that's just great for me. Anyway, you guys should check out Tune Track stuff. If you ever want to have drums and bass in your stuff, they got drums and they got bass. Uh, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.